You start your day in a pub in London. The local constable walks in and starts asking people about their beer drinking and butter knife licenses. You're given an option to clock him, sneak out, or try to argue your way out. Being the sensible option, you choose to sneak out. You have a job to do after all. The Admiralty has requested that you pick up strategic information from a port in far north. Whither? Knowing that you have not been to the east of it, and since all the islands move from time to time, an accurate map is impossible without discovery. You decide to pack some extra supplies to discover the north-eastern port that your old friend Navigator strongly suggested to visit, for he had some business there. You head to the provisioner's shop to stock up on fuel and supplies for the upcoming journey. You realize after your rather unprofitable excursion into the Z, you barely have enough to make it to Wither and back. You will have to resort to more miskier, riskier means to make the strip worth it. Maybe the college will be interested in some loot you found in the Southern Isles. While you are collecting your thoughts, you are approached by a rather rugged gentleman who introduces himself as the Blind Bruiser despite being blind in only one eye. He explains that his patron has heard of your most recent exploits, and would like to offer a gift of goodwill to visit him and perhaps help him in a future date. The gifts that are that of fuel and supplies, more than you would need for the trip. You consider the implications, but coming back home for meager returns sours your appetite more than the idea of working for a potentially unscrupulous patron. You head to your ship and your few remaining crew load the cargo and make the preparations to undock. You tell your navigator where you're headed and he charts the course. Who would have thought life after college in literature of all things would take you to the frozen wastes? Have you risked your life for a living most even don't get the chance for? Right off London, you head to the Hunter's Keep where the lovely three sisters and their servants reside. For a brief interlude and for some dinner, as well as lovely company, the journey is long, after all. You sail north to your first step, Wenderbite, where the old folk come to die. Death in the Untersee is a strange concept. Maybe they find some solace here. You quickly realize there is not much to do for when you are here, and so, after a brief stop for supper, you make your way north towards your destination. The journey is uneventful, and you dock, talk to the man at the docks, who gives you the files for the Admiralty. However, now you have them, you could take them to Conate, or save them for a bigger reward. You can decide later, for the less time you spend in this frozen hell, the better. You sail quickly to the east narrowly avoiding the attention of the things better left unmentioned. Thus, add more marks to your map. Sailing further east, you see a giant island of ice, almost as big as London from the looks of it, as well as the port with people and their campfires. We are here, says the navigator. I have to head in. You have no idea what to make of this place, so you stick around and talk to the scholars and philosophers who are in the port of this place for some reason. From what they tell you, the castle drives people mad, and venturing deeper is almost a death sentence. You meet some nice people there who offer you some supplies and company. You can use both before returning to the Z. As it is time to head out, you look for your navigator, and all you find at the strap steps of Frostfound is his old coat. You poke through his coat and find a brass telescope from the Khanate, a much annotated chart, tobacco, an alarming quantity of lice. But the navigator is gone, you never see him again. This is an average story that you can expect in the Sunless Sea. After talking about a few other topics, this week we will talk about the third game that I think very much is better than a triple A strategy titles out there. And some may think Sunless Sea and its sequel Sunless Skies does not count as strategy games, but considering the core challenge in both of these games is managing randomness through resource management and some major planning, I think they very much do fall into the category of a strategy game. 
in terms of challenges that they present. Soundless Sea is a simplistic game where most of the story interaction is delivered through reading. However, at times you spend at the sea, or the Z as the game refers to it, is not boring, at least for the most part. It builds pacing and keeps you on your toes because there are possible enemies, loot and even story elements that can happen on the Z, so it is important to determine if you'll be able to take the battle or not. The Z is where the strategy element comes in. There are three main resources you need to manage at all times. <clears throat> Terror, which is kind of a sanity or stress mechanic of the entire crew, so as things get a bit too intense without any light or visiting home, or just by encountering some strange things, you will start having some bad stuff happening to you, such as mutiny or worse, as your terror increases. This one is also a risk-reward mechanic of the game, since your stress lowers as you sail closer to the land and have your lights on, but it makes you more visible and most middle sections of the Z, there is close to no land. It rises on its own even with the light on and with the light off and away from land it rises few pips per second and that's a short way to sanity. So you might ask why not keep the light on at all times? Well if you do, you become more visible to the giant sharks with caged heads and giant crabs and other matter of things you don't want to stay in close proximity to. The other two resources are a bit simpler. Supplies, which you need for your crew. These are consumed periodically and more crew you have, the more these are consumed. Funny things about the crew is that 1. Your officers do not count because that would be annoying. 2. High crew is bad in most situations because you do not get any penalties or bonuses uh, and you don't get any penalties until you are below 50%. And since higher crew makes you consume more supplies which costs money and precious cargo space, you want to keep this crew one or two above half most of the time. 3. Buying bigger and better ships requires more supplies because it needs more crew to run. So don't be so excited about getting a bigger ship, you will still need to allocate more resources to run the damn thing. Last resource we've got is fuel, which is simple, you need fuel to sail. And if you're out, there are a few ways to get out of it and to get a bit of fuel more unconventional ways. So plan your trips accordingly. These are the basics of the game that I wish I knew more about when I started. Stats themselves may seem a little strange, but outside of their combat benefits, which are explained when you hover over them, they are used as stat checks in the story events that you will encounter. These stats and their progression is up to your discretion and up to how you want to build your character. This and more skill-oriented combat are the only pure RPG mechanics in this game. So let's talk about the big thing, the story. It's nuts. In the world of fallen London, stars make the laws of physics and their sun rays is what enforces those laws. So without the sun, you have an ANCAP utopia from physics down there. Which is why the whole concept of sunless sea is so important in this world. Your first question might be, how did London ended up being underground in the first place? Well, from what I've gathered from hundreds of hours of playing this game, Queen Victoria made a deal with this entity, the Bazaar, or the Devils, it's kind of not clear, uh, to save her husband, which resulted in some bats literally picking up London and putting it in the sea in a cave where only other human group is a Mongolian, is a bunch of Mongolians who have been there much, much longer. The rest is up to you to discover. But actually, knowing this would have made the immersion better, which is why I'm telling you this part. The story of the game is very immersive on every level, except at the start, if you aren't really prepared, it can be a little overwhelming. From the short story of a few sisters living in an island on their cottage, to making deals with the strange gods of the Untersee, it's all very consistent. So if you're a fan of subtle horror stories such as Lovecraft, then definitely go and play it. This game is all about planning ahead, working with very limited resources that you're given, while doing some safe trade of coffee from ports might sound safer, it's nothing but sabotaging your fun and it will sound enticing considering how risky this sea can be. The most profitable venture in the game is exploration, gathering port reports and doing stories while managing those three resources. You can upgrade your ship and its parts which might 
which might make you more prepared for combat and increase your stats to make life in the Z easier, but just like in FTL, after playing for a while you realize that your starting ship is not all that bad. This, uh, this is one of the games that I like to come back to detox from other games and I would wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone who likes resource management and horror challenges as well as a good story. Well, do let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.